The Chichetum Fells Library is a friendly Tudor building on the corner of Market Street and Spittle Lane. A week rarely goes by when I don't go there at least once. Even when I am not caught up with my reading, I like to visit old favourites on the shelves, rather as if they are dear ones now living in a nursing home, to let them know Ellie Haskell hasn't forgotten them. So I am in a position to report that our library plays host to an inviting selection of well-dusted books, a marble bust of William Shakespeare, and a curmudgeonly ghost. The story bandied about our seaside village is that Hector Rigglesworth, a widower and tea salesman by trade, did when, on the brink of death, at the tail end of the 19th century, curse the library and vowed to haunt its stacks until a just vengeance was achieved in reparation for his earthly suffering. According to our librarian, the malcontent Mr Rigglesworth was father to seven spinster daughters, all of whom remained under his roof, growing more querulous by the hour. The girls, as they were known in the village even after their hair had collectively turned grey, had never lacked for suitors when young, but, alas, a man never appeared on the doorstep of tall chimneys who was not found wanting in one particular or another. The curate blew his nose in public. The bank clerk had a twitch. The police constable guffawed. And so it went on, until Hector Rigglesworth reached the unassailable conclusion that his daughter's heads had been filled with romantic rubbish as a result of the books they were forever borrowing from the library. What flesh-and-blood man could compete on an equal footing with swashbucklers or regency bows? So, as the seven girls changed from promising to menopausal, Hector Rigglesworth toiled up and down stairs with endless cups of tea or tended to the housewifely duties that had fallen to his lot, the maid having married one of the rejected suitors. Poor Mr Rigglesworth. He grew increasingly embittered, his burden was made the heavier during his declining years by being routinely dispatched to the library to collect the breathlessly awaited novels by favoured authors. The girls, understandably, were unable to go themselves in case the likes of Mr Rochester or Mr Darcy should show up with a special licence and a couple of railway tickets to Gretna Green.